Okay, so I got myself a new facelifted 79, the V8 of course. And uh, still the same limited truck like the old ones. Doesn't have a reverse camera, so that's the job. Putting a, putting a reverse camera to the factory head unit in the new facelift 70 series. The kit I've got has come from uh, Custom Car Stereo Systems. Very uh, comprehensive instructions here. And the kit comes with uh, just the wiring harness. So it's all plug and play. I've been told it's all plug and play. Uh, don't even have to look for the reverse trigger either. So no splicing wires, nothing, just plug and play. So obviously it comes with the harness, comes with the camera cable, it's already in the sheath. So this will go from, from the head unit all the way to the actual physical camera at the back. Uh, here's the camera. It's supposed to be HD. Well, the screen's not, so it doesn't really matter. And I also opted for the, the switch, which allows me to uh, turn the camera on whenever I want, even if it's not in reverse. So it's like an override switch. Which makes it handy, I suppose. You can check the trailer um, while you're driving, or I've got a canopy on mine, so you can I can use the reverse camera to see what's going on behind me, even while I'm driving forwards. I don't know. I thought it would be a good idea. There's only a few dollars extra just to get the switch. I think it, I think they gave me a bit of a different oh yeah different harness as well. Cause it's got the plug on it, but that was part of the kit. And just a camera mount. So I'm just going to install this now into the uh, into the truck, and I'll talk about it along the way. You can watch how I wire it up, how I route the wires. Alright, so what I'm going to do first up is remove the head unit and um, just plug it in because I actually want to see where I'm going to mount this camera. Okay, so first, this plastic that's around just comes out now from memory. In my old truck, we used to just pull it out. Can't get a grip on this one now. It's a little bit different. Under here, there's two little... Two little uh, notches that the tool sort of goes into and you can pry it out. So I'm just going to be careful here and just pop it out slowly without scratching anything. There we go. The one in the middle. Much easier in the previous generation Land Cruiser. Must be slightly different. Anyway, just unplug. I might be able to just leave that up there. 10 mil, 10 mil socket. Just remove these bolts. From memory, the two bottom ones are bolts and the two top ones are screws, but they're both 10 mil. That one's gonna fall out. Okay, there he's out. Got 
an old towel here because I don't want to scratch anything. So it is much neater in here. In the I had a 2023 pre-facelifted uh, Land Cruiser before this one, and I just only recently sold it. But there was a lot more in here. Now, I don't know if because I had the Workmate version, there was these kind of cables didn't go anywhere because it didn't have a clock, didn't have certain things. But this one here seems to be a bit more simple. All right, well, I'll go get that harness and work out what goes where here. Okay, this is very self-explanatory. Uh... You can't stuff this up. Only certain plugs go into certain areas. It's the same. You can't, you cannot stuff this up. Just follow. When we're going to put this camera so you can see, I'm going to have to get the tripod. So, this is the harness. Uh, yeah, like I said, cannot stuff this up. The green one is for the switch. And these, that goes to the camera, and these are literally plug and play, male, female. So unplug the corresponding ones and plug them back in. That one, and this one. Tricky, that one. Okay. Plug it in here. Upside down. Plug it in there. This one here. Plug it in here. That one plugs back in there. And let it go. This one here, plugs back in here. And then this will be the switch, override switch, which is the right style for the 79, it goes in there. And then this is the camera cable. Uh, what have we got here, male or female on this side? I can't see what's going on here. Uh, female. Male. Where's that little thing? This way. Like so. Plug the camera into this side. And right. I'm assuming it'll work. So I'm just going to put this back in just so I can see everything. Hold it. Turn this ignition on. camera upside down perfect that is so simple now I just got to run all the cabling isn't that It's actually very simple and the camera quality is is quite good 
Very happy with that. Very happy with that. All right, now I'm gonna take all this to the back and we'll see how everything's gonna look. Oh, how does this override switch work? Override's on. That's real easy. God, I still can't see it. I tilt it down. That's not ex it's not exactly a super wide lens, this, is it? That I can see just the the very top of the ball. I'll take this out. Oh yeah. Let's redrill this. Alright, that looks happy with that. I'll muck around with that in a second. A little bit of a tip here. See the difference between these two? This flat plate, when it's in the toe, you know, what do you call this part? The receiver, right? Once it's in there, you've got a flat surface here all the way through. What happens with this one, and I've seen it, this radius here camera in that radius chews out the side of this and it elongates this hole ruins the, the thing so if you're if you're towing a um like if you want to tow for a long time like towing a caravan or something you're going to be doing a lot of kilometers with the trailer on this little bit of movement and this thing rattling around that radius chews that out um having the pin with a flat this flat plate means that you've got the straight part of this shaft on the holes at all time and that radius 
is well away from doing any damage. So I'm gonna go with that option. Let's go in the cab and see how that looks. <laughs> Yeah, I'm happy with that. You can see the tow ball right there. Should be able to back onto a trailer easy. In this section now, this button here, which is camera view, on or off. And I'm thinking I'm gonna mount it here. So got the traction control button, camera button. It's off to get to it. I have some more 10 mil bolts under here. It's pretty tight. If you're worried you're gonna break something, you would be worried. It's it's scared it's gonna break. Oh. Decent clips, man. Go. That just went under the seat. Get that another day. Right. So, camera view. Right, put that in there like so. It's actually a very nice switch. And this has to drop down below okay. I'm gonna leave the majority up there unplug this and this needs to go somewhere so take this out and how do we get this again this is no tools from memory. Squeeze this together. There we go. Now I wanted to run the cables for the Topro at the same time. And I thought I had the right amount of stuff. Turns out I don't. I had the wrong gauge cable, so I'll have to be pulling all this stuff apart again sometime. Take this kick panel off. Show you how I run this. I'm gonna go. Hey, under here is a little bit different to the old 70. I'm gonna have a look at this. Bring the light down here. All right. So this was not here in the old 70 series. I don't know what all this does. Looks like could be something to do with the aircon, maybe. But it wasn't here. I'm sure this wasn't here. Because I ran, 
I ran my brake controller cable somewhere. It, this wasn't here. So I don't know if this has got something to do with... No idea, there's a lot of cable here. So they've put something down here. The only thing that this this has that the the old 70 didn't have was the lane keeping, lane assist, um, that sort of thing wasn't in there. So maybe this is a computer to control all that. I'm guessing. Well, that's different. So it's going to be a little bit more tricky to get the cables down here, but it's all right. We'll go up this way. Follow this up. All right. I like all this stuff to look neat. So if we go up here. Here. And now we're gonna get it across. The tow pro, I mount my tow pro up here, so I don't want to go. I don't want to go that way. Go behind here. Something like that. We should be able to find that now. There it is. Right, connect this up. I'm going to tape that. There's no way this will ever come off by itself. Two bolts at the bottom. No one was in here.
last thing you want is to hear this stupid cable rattling under the dash so Try and feed this. So I have to take that panel off. See if I can get it on the other side. Yeah, easy enough. So this is uh, the plug that goes through the back wall of the truck. And I'm just going to use this punch, cut the center out because that's where the cable is going to go through. That's perfect. That's it. Now if you don't have a punch, I'm sure you can drill it. Just be careful and hit your fingers. Okay, so this a bit hard to see goes there. Can you see that? And then we just run the cable through that. Ace Ventura vibes. Alright. Now, I don't know if it helps. The cable, obviously, these uh, sheep's got to split on one side as so you get the wire in there. 
So make it go split at the bottom where it comes through the back wall. So if there's any um, water, I suppose, it's not going to follow, like get inside the actual sheath and, and run its way into the car. So I don't know, maybe I'm just overlooking it, but upside down sort of makes sense. Give it a quick rundown. The cab, everything looks stock. Factory head unit, which has Android Auto and everything on it, so that's why I haven't changed it yet. And the main reason why I haven't changed it yet is the Bluetooth. The Bluetooth audio is crystal clear. Um, surprising for a 79 series, because the the Lexus LX that I've got gets a bit of interference when you're talking. This one here, no one has complained that they can't hear me <clears throat> in this truck while I'm talking to them. And that is with all the wind noise that the 70 series has, plus the dual four inch exhaust, they can't, they never complain. So for now, it's staying. So Android Auto, it does everything that it needs to do. So why upgrade it <clears throat> at this stage? Anyway, the old truck had the Joying 10.1 like a big screen and that was cool but I didn't use it for what it was worth and for all the little bits and pieces there was, there was too many things on it that were annoying this is for me much better the clarity is not there definitely but it's much better it seems to be working all right so obviously you've seen that I've got my switch down here which is for the turn the camera on and off by overriding the reverse and obviously it came across with the glove box into the kick panel. It's under here. It goes all the way from the back. In the back, comes up, goes through that grommet. Comes out of that grommet, straight down, chassis. Um, there's nothing really to strap it to, so here we'll do. Once I get those clips, as I said, I'm going to put it up here. Uh, and then 
got this channel here which is full of reverse sensors. Um, this truck obviously doesn't have reverse sensors, so they're not used, so just ran it through there. And then from the back, there's the camera. Should be it for this truck for now. The only thing I've got left is these <clears throat> tie down points. I've got to cut them to size. And I'm going to fit them in the floor of the back of the tray here. So one here, one over there. That allows me to tie stuff down. I'm also welding it to the top side of the ladder rack. So one right across there and the front. And I'm going to put, yeah, like up here, up here too. That way, whatever we put on the roof, I can move the points and tie stuff onto. This is the, an actual um, the aeronautical tie-down um, thing. So this is very thick. This is not the one that you get from like ARB or, um, or TJM or BCF or whatever those. This is um, like these ones, these points are rated for 700 kilos. These ones are rated for, don't quote me. I think 1,200 kilos. Um, obviously it's screwed down every 100 millimeters, but I'm going to TIG weld this to the to the frame because this is aluminium. And that's how that one's going to go. So it's another that's going to happen on another day. But for now, I can operate. All right. So the reverse camera is in the new 70 series, 100 odd grand, no reverse camera. Uh, Toyota, I think you could put that one in, especially for the Australian market. It would, you wouldn't even have to add it onto the price. It's, it's nothing. But um, through custom car stereo systems, I just bought the product online. They make up the harness. Uh, it's all plug and play, as you saw. Just an easy, easy product. So. If you need a reverse camera, I recommend this one. If you're going to keep the uh, the factory unit, the factory head unit has Android Auto and all that sort of stuff. So the 2024 model does have a little bit more than the 23 model. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's actually quite a decent head unit. The Bluetooth audio, like I said, is is very good. No one complains that they can't hear me. And the 70 series is a loud truck, and um, I've got like a twin four inch exhaust because I don't know I like to hear it a little bit I suppose it's not st it's not stupid loud but anyway it's it's noisy plus the wind noise the cab gets and all that sort of stuff and no one complains about not hearing me on the Bluetooth so I'm really happy about that the old the old truck um, if you saw from previous videos I had the joying 10.1 um, my big screen in there and that was good but the Bluetooth audio was terrible it was actually really bad and the the thing I hated about it was the volume on the head unit. So you, volume's usually up because you can't hear the music and the speakers are tiny and whatever. But that volume is also the ringtone volume. And then when the phone rings and you're not paying attention and it's so loud, it always scares me. It's just stupid. You couldn't, you couldn't change the volume of the ring or change the ringtone or any of that. So that was a deal breaker for me. So I didn't buy another one and I sold it with the old truck. So the standard head unit for now is staying. Um, but yeah, thanks for, thanks for watching that one. Um, if you're going to do it yourself, an easy project, very easy. You'll do it in a couple of hours. All right, thanks.